Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Press This. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Dan. Dan, always great to see you. Always. Excited to get this show Absolutely. going because we have a lot, uh, had a lot of technical issues, but we're ready to get going. This is the show where we're going to teach you all about WordPress. We're going to compare plugins, themes, frameworks, anything to do with WordPress. We might put it head to head. We might review it. We might take a look at it, see what's going, going on with that. And today we're going to talk about membership plugins. Membership plugins. Useful for good things like... Um, uh, creating content, selling it to people, um, creating special forums for people to, to kind of have their voice heard with a special community, creating drip content, which is uh, going to be a major focus of today's discussion. That's awesome. Um, so being able to basically give people tutorials or lessons or video content or just compelling content of any sort on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of membership plugins out there. Uh, we're going to take a look at two of them specifically today, but we're going to throw some names out there. Uh, plugins like Wishlist, Premise, Magic Members, WP Member, Registered Content Plugin uh, Pro and Free from Pippin's Plugins. Uh, there's a, probably a whole slew more. There's and if, tons, yeah. If you've got some that you you definitely want us to take a look at, post it down in the comments or shoot us a message, uh, Twitter at Slocum Studio. Uh, slocumstudio.com slash blog and leave a comment uh, on this blog post. Let us know if there's one particular that you want us to take a look at. That's what we're here for. Yeah, so why should you be using membership plugins in the first place? Well, if you're a marketer or if you're running a service uh, in, in the service industry or if you've got special content that you're marketing, content marketing, yeah. that's the big thing that we talk about all the time uh, here at the studio uh, and in the SEO world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to restrict content to members only. Right. They don't have to be paid members. But they could be free members. Right. You could just have a free yeah. premium section or a paid premium section. A fantastic opportunity. We talked about contact forms, mail lists, things like that. A huge, huge focus on marketing today online. And this is a perfect opportunity to get a subscription, get somebody to be part of this community, and build your mailing list, which is really great. Yeah, that's exactly it. And you can protect uh, forums. You go all the way from your WordPress blog posts and pages to forum areas, digital downloads, support ticketing systems, special videos, training videos. That's actually the most popular use is to protect tra- training videos uh, for these educational uh, series that come out. And you, and you can even look at e-commerce in this. You can look at, you know, subscribe and, you know, here's the song of the day or here's, you know, this digital, this little digital thing or this plugin that we have available today. You know, there's all kinds of, all kinds of uh, options for you. Yeah, and if you're, Word, especially if you're a WordPress developer or designer, you can protect that support forum or your own theme or plugin that you might be developing. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so we're going to look at so today. We're going to look at premise and wish list. Yes. Uh, pro- reason why is we have experience using these two. We already have uh, the licenses to install right. them. So we, we're we're probably going to take a look at it more in depth in another episode. Uh, but today we're going to talk specifically about um, how uh, these both stack up against each other. Right. right. Um, and I'm going to start with wish list. Okay. Uh, so let's just pull this up real quick. Of course. And on wish list, I find it to be. A much, I find it to be the most robust membership platform, and I'm going to call it a platform because, uh, or an ecosystem, <laughs> yeah, an ecosystem <laughs> that we talked about before, because it has all kinds of other stuff that goes along with it. Um, might be the longest running plugin okay. for the membership. Wasn't uh, that. Cool. I, don't quote me on that. Okay. We have to go back and look at the statistics. Maybe we'll do it when we do a, a wrap up of all these plugins. Sure. Uh, but it certainly has uh, matured. Uh, you know, one of the most mature presents that I've seen. Yeah, and I was looking at it. A uh, lot of different payment gateways available out of the gate. Um, tons of options. And what I thought was really cool is we always talk, and we always have this conversation of the, the you know the free plugin or the premium plugin, which isn't the case today. We also have the conversation of sort of a more developer focused plugin than a designer focused. And what I really thought was cool about it was it seemed to have a little of both. Mm-hmm. So you had a great way to just a very visual way to just start to create compelling content for people. But then you also had a, things like cron jobs and other things you could do, much more developer oriented code based sort of application also in yeah. this plugin. And that's actually one of the drawbacks uh, of premise when you compare it to a, a wish list sure. member. Um, Wishlist member is like a WooCommerce where it comes with its own dashboard. You can get reports. You can, right. you know, you can see all these statistics of, of your membership, who's leaving, who's coming, who's going, right. stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, on, under its own dashboard. And it's super, super granular. And my favorite part about it are the membership levels that you can set up. Right. 
um, super granular down to you know how many days this membership lasts. Uh, do I want to upgrade this membership at a certain day or time or a certain action? What pieces of content can these people get access to? That kind of thing. Yeah, and if you and if you go into their website, they spend a lot of time talking about that information: mm-hmm. the gold, the silver level, the bronze level. You know, you can create your own levels for whatever you'd like to do. It's also the way that they tackle um, content dripping. Is it cool if I talk about that for yeah, like a second? Absolutely. Kind of with regards to both plugins. Um, they both have very uneloquent ways I found to do content dripping, which is something we talked about a little earlier. Uh, when you're when you're doing this with with wishlist, it's a little strange because the way they tackle it is you basically create different membership levels. So rather than say, well, next week this person will get this piece of content, they say, well, next week this user can go from the bronze level to the silver level automatically, and then when they're the silver level, this other content becomes available to them. So I thought it was sort of a, I don't know if hackney is the word, but a, a weird sort of way to, to sort of fix that. Yeah. Um, you look at the premise side of things, and it's a little different too. They don't just let you pump out content. This page will only be available when you are this member or when you have, you're this many days into your content cycle. It's more about um, putting code or short code into your actual page mm-hmm. to say, this piece of this content will only be available when yeah. you're certain certain yeah, amount of days. Yeah, this link in. or this file yeah. will be yeah. will be available. A little funky, um, you know. And and why is that? It's because out of the box, WordPress can do this stuff by default. Right. You just have to kind of be a little bit of a developer slash hacker to right. to know that I am going to restrict these pieces of content to right. these certain roles. Mm-hmm. So these plugins are essentially taking that minute little function mm-hmm. of WordPress and building this whole workflow on top right. of it okay. um you know so that they can do things like bronze membership and how long does this membership last right. and what content do they get access to um so there's each one will give us a different work around right. workflow right. uh and it's really when you're looking at this stuff that's the most important part i'd put that before the ecosystem right okay. because with this stuff this is the stuff that you're actively managing day to day okay yeah. you're you're making new membership accounts you're making promotional membership accounts you might do one that's free for 90 days right. to test the market you know you're, you're always playing with this so you're right. always going to be in there and if you don't find the workflow that you like you're just going to be pulling your hair out yeah and, and and switching membership plugins which is fine and you can do that but then it's then you're up against the wall where did this membership plugin have all these features that I really like yeah. and user tracking and importing right. and stuff like that. Right. So, um, And the nice thing about them, too, is when you go on their websites, again, um, they do a j- pretty good job of telling you this is what the site's going to be used for. So depending on your business, your model, yeah. uh, you're going to be able to find the solution that meets your needs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so on a head-to-head level, uh, wishlist member against premise, wishlist is much more robust. Right. Side note, Premise, the premise of premise, yeah. is or was uh, landing pages. Okay. Created by Studio Press, it was all it was a plugin okay. just to create marketing landing pages. Okay. What did the guys at Studio Press learn? They learned that people were f- funneling these landing pages into memberships. Right. Well, why don't we make premise funnel into Do memberships that, yeah. or actually create memberships through premise? So. Without a doubt, there will be it'll it will continue to evolve and get a little bit more mature. So, sure, the using short codes is a little wonky, a little tedious. Then yeah. you have to remember what the short codes are, yeah. have a list of them, and you know mm-hmm. things like that. Sure. It's not as pretty and graphically driven as a wish list member, um, but it's going to grow, right? right? Or you would expect it to grow. It's newer, so hopefully it will. It'll be it'll be growing and yeah. evolving to a level that wishlist member is already at. Yeah, wishlist member again. You could uh, integrate with a little bit more uh, payment gateways. Right, there were tons. I mean, two checkout authorized. Yeah, PayPal. I mean it was. I mean, you name it. There's a huge list. Yeah. right out. Yep. Yeah, premise is going to do your core stuff: Google checkout, uh, PayPal. Uh, they have authorized.net. I believe authorized.net. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna get uh, you know a little bit of. Uh, a roadblock, if you will, sure. depending on what your payment sure. gateway is, if you go with pre- premise. But again, the the majors are there. Uh, premise also, or excuse me, wishlist member also has a per post management system. Interesting. So on each page or, or post, paper post yep. you can actually do pay per post mm-hmm. or, or really get granular all the way down to that single piece yeah. of content, which is great. Um, Tracking registration URLs per each membership. I mean, you can really get into the, <laughs> the details. List goes on and on and on. Yeah, and the list goes on and on and on. We're going to go into that probably right. in a later yeah. episode where we actually drill down on all these, uh, you know, different settings. Sure. Uh, 
So let's talk about price yeah, right? and, and accessibility. Let's do a little bit of a price <laughs> on these guys. So coming into the price of these guys, they have different pricing models. Mm -hmm. um, Premise is very basic. Premise just says, give us 165 bucks, here you go. So they give you everything, unlimited everything. They actually say that right on there. I feel like I'm from Sprint or something. They give, they give you all this, you know, this yep. stuff, and they just say 165 bucks once. Here you are. Wishlist member does a very different take on that. They have two different pricing models. They actually have a single user pricing model, and then they also have a developer or a unlimited pricing model. Multi-site license is what they call it. Mm -hmm. um, the single license is ninety-seven dollars, and the multi-site license is, according to here, two ninety-seven. And the other thing that the multi-site license gives you, which is nice, is a bunch of videos. Um, and plug-in tutorials and things like that for you, which is awesome. Uh, and there's a developer license too, right, for Wishlist? Uh, um, I thought there was a uh, one that was a little bit more money, two, oh, 297 Yeah, yeah, that's a multi-site um, license. Isn't there yeah. a four? I thought there was a $400 option. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. Um, <laughs> Take a quick look, but... Uh, as of what as of what what they what they advertise, they have the single li site license and the multi site license, and the multi site does give you unlimited domains, so it's possible that they changed that um, recently. But it's I remember before they had or one of these options had a one domain, a three domain, and unlimited. But mm -hmm. all right, uh, they might have changed over. Yeah, I think when we were doing some initial research, there yeah. was um, a uh, developer edition where you could actually white label mm -hmm. wish list. Right. Uh, and resell the services as if you were yep. come to me, okay. create membership sites. Okay. I can reuse their plugin, yep. say that it's mine, sure. but you're really uh, right. white labeling theirs. Right. And uh, just, to, just really quickly looking right here for you guys, uh, if you are developers looking to basically sort of market this out to clients, they actually do have a commercial license I'm ah. reading right here. Okay. So the multi side license is for personal use only. Um, if it is for clients, you actually, they actually want you to contact them. So it's one of those okay. B2B sort of sales sort of sure. things where you're going to bundle package it or they're going to talk to you about pricing okay. depending on your needs. Yeah, so that, that's probably what we saw sure. uh, early on. Sure. Um, so, you know, there's no uh, upper hand here unless, you're, unless you want something that is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, su very support-driven, right. uh, which Wishlist is. I mean, that's mm -hmm. all they do is make this plug-in. Right. Studio Press does a whole wide range right. of things. Um, so I'm sure from a support level, wish list is definitely thinking all about memberships. Yeah. And as they grow, it's going to be that. But I'm sure Studio Press in the same boat. Right. Um, I think that premise, if you're looking for something to handle a landing page mm -hmm. uh, and make these sales squeeze pages, you might kill two birds with one stone. It's probably what their... That's what it was built for. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably what their, uh, their you know, strategy is, right. is to say, hey, we can, get the, we can do landing pages mm -hmm. for you, funnel them into a membership, even though it's as more basic than wishlist member yeah. still going to work for you still going to work for you looking done. to do uh wishlist uh you know again focused on just membership stuff and their support team is there ready for you uh when you have those questions we awesome. will uh dive more into this stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, as we go along we're going to start to look uh next i think at magic members against wp member uh and then look at some of the free yeah. slash commercial uh uh, right, right. plugins that are out there. So it, stuff you can start for free and it, stuff you can pay for. Yeah, it should look similar to what we just did our e-commerce series for a while along with the payment gateway coverage. So it should look similar to that. We'll be talking about all the different plugins, free versus premium, what you can do, what you can get out of them. Uh, so there should be intense coverage if you want to see some of that e-commerce stuff and payment gateway stuff as well as continued coverage of here. We welcome you to go to our website, slocumstudio.com slash blog to take a look at that. You can also go uh, subscribe to us at slocumstudio.com slash subscribe to kind of get this, this sort of uh, membership plug and stuff as it comes out, which is going to be really cool. Additionally, if you're watching us here on YouTube, uh, you can go ahead uh, and uh, subscribe to our page, Slocum Studio, and comment down below. Awesome. Not to be too self-serving, but we want to reach you guys as best as possible <laughs> and, and get connected. Do let us know uh, any other uh, member plugins you want us to see uh, see reviewed, any other plugins or topics you definitely want us to see. We really want to connect with you guys. Right. You, a lot of great questions and all the other videos that yeah, are coming lots out. Lots of great comments. Yeah. So we appreciate it. Yeah. Definitely here to, to help and definitely here to, to, to show you uh, all the content that we can possibly provide for WordPress. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.